Hi, I'm Mr. Franklin, and this video is on how to take paper copies of notes. So this is basically a paper recreation of the note-taking guide in the Google Doc, but I will also have a, an example for you to, to see where it's more like a traditional notes page. So I think it'll make more sense when I show you that. Um, so this is a general format of what Cornell Notes will look like for this class. Um, I've learned some things since I've started doing this. First, the number one thing you should do is whatever the title of the notes are. While we're doing it online through Canvas, we are generally numbering the notes and then we are going to be having the title of the video. So in this case, it's taking video notes. If it was textbook time, you would write chapter two, textbook time. Okay, so for like in our the previous video, I stated that you would take notes for video notes, for Zoom meetings, as well as for textbook time. So that's where you would put there so you can tell the difference. Then you're gonna put your name, not my name. I'm the one writing these notes, so I put my name. So go ahead and put your name right here. Okay, and then you're gonna put your block. And because we're uploading pictures of our notes and things like that, this will make it easy for me to very quickly uh, go through the notes and, and grade those. If you leave this out, yes, I can figure out who sent it to me, but it takes longer. And the longer it takes me to grade, the longer it takes you to get your grade back. And that slows everybody down. So please make sure you're putting your name on there as well as your block number because if you email them to me and it doesn't have that, then I have to spend time searching for what block you belong in, okay? Especially here at the beginning when I'm still getting to know you, that's gonna be really important. Okay, so in general with Cornell Notes, if you've ever done this before, the general outline is you have a line down about the left third of the page. So you go over about a third, maybe a quarter, depending on how big you write, okay? and you go down the page. The bottom line is you wanna have some room on the left side to write short notes, like summary type sentences or summary questions, generally just two to five words, very short I, over here. And then over here is where you're gonna write your notes. At the end of your notes, when you finish, you will have a section where you're going to write a summary, okay? And we're gonna come back to that. So not at the bottom of every page, but at the end of your notes, you're gonna have a summary, okay? So first thing, this is sometimes called the Q column or the summary column or the main idea column or the question column. There's lots of different names depending on who you talk to. But basically, you're going to use this column to record main ideas, points of focus, and I, I really think this one's important for studying later key questions, okay? For the notes, you're gonna use this column to record important terms and definitions, pictures and diagrams, facts and figures, and any other important information. I like to think of this as like my scratch area where I just write whatever I'm writing, and then later I'm gonna go back and maybe fix it and add things to it. So you should also, when you're taking notes, make sure that you're leaving space to come back and add to it, okay? Now, the next part of this is, while that's the focus of what we're going to doing, before you actually start the lesson, the more you can prepare this page before you start, it'll just help you. Uh, sometimes that's not possible, um, but for example, like if you're taking notes on the Zoom session, I generally have either a warm up or an objective slide up for you, and you could use that objective slide too. Before the lesson, write down one or two words that are the main ideas and then leave space. So you could say, hey, this is about why do we take notes, taking notes, so you could kind of put down some main ideas. I tend to, most of the time, because I'm the student, I tend to not do that before, but if you can, that actually is very helpful. I tend to come back after the fact and do that, but that's up to you. You can do it before, but you can also wait and do it later. But you still need to do it. The problem with doing it later is a lot of people forget and then they lose points, so don't forget. 
Your notes should, when you're finished with it, help me remember the lesson. It should organize your thinking. And it should help me study because all my thoughts are organized. Everything is kind of put together and they should be easy to read. So if you compare this to the digital version, you'll notice that this format is slightly different, partly because I'm taking, I was taking notes for myself. So I, I tend to do this bulleted style and it works for me. Some people use a outline format with like Roman numerals and letters and numbers and all that stuff. And that's up to you. But this is where I'm taking notes. This is going to be main ideas. During the lesson, you're going to identify important ideas and maybe write a question. So for example, one question might be, what are Cornell notes? Now I don't do it here, but right here, we should probably have the answer to that question somehow right there. Okay. And we don't quite have that because that's an example. Now, in the moment, you're going to record the notes while watching a video or reading a text. Okay, you're going to record supporting ideas, facts, etc., and you're going to use short sentences or bullets. A telegraphic sentence is what that says. Telegraphic sentence is one that contains the basic information you need. It's there's no extra words. It is only what you need to know. Okay. So when I got to the end of the page, and some of you will get to the end of the page in different at different rates because of how big you write, okay? You just go to the back of the page. Some people like to leave this page blank and they go to the next page. I don't care how you do it, but when you go to the next page, notice I just continue the line all the way down. You can put up here, this might be Franklin taking notes. page two, okay? I might put some kind of title so that I know that it's continued, but it's pretty obvious because there's no, no other title information. You're gonna continue writing questions. And the best time to write questions is as soon as you finish the notes, go back immediately and start writing questions. What is a good question that summarizes what, what we just wrote in our notes? Now, so we've recorded our notes. We've recorded our notes. When you finish your notes, what these questions allow us to do is you can then cover up your notes with like a blank piece of paper, and you're going to recite your notes. You're going to go to the question, read the question, covering up the answer, basically, and now you have a way to study. You can now recite. Use the questions to test yourself. Use your own words. You can recite your notes back to yourself, and that's one way to study. You can do that. The other way to study is to reflect on your notes. And this is basically all those annotation things you might have learned in history or English. You're going to come back, and you can actually use those to annotate your notes. Um, you can start asking what's a significant, what's, what is significant about this? What principle is it based on? How is this connected to the things we've learned in class? How can I apply them? What's beyond them? And you'll see an example of this in a second. Bottom line is, I might. this is where I would break out the highlighter and I might come in and highlight something that's important. I might use a different colored pen and I might add in, this is important for the next test as well. So a lot of it depends on what you have. I'm perfectly fine doing it with the same pen. I've got marks that I use when I do that, um, but you can use other tools as well. The last step in taking the notes is you're actually going to review the notes and you should spend at least 10 minutes every week reviewing your notes. So you should kind of flip through, especially when we're in this measurement unit, you should flip through your notes, take a quick look through them, make sure that you're kind of, and when you do that, what you'll do is you'll start to get a big picture sense of what your notes are about. And then finally, you write a summary. So you're going to use this space at the very end of your notes to write a two to three sentence summary. Okay, that's all well and good, Mr. Franklin, but that's really not formatted the way I want our notes formatted. So what I did was I took our Zoom session from September 1st and I took notes on the Zoom session. 